Five minutes. Thank you very much, Chairman Laudermilk and Ranking Member Torres. Um, I'm really here to present uh, the staff perspective of our office, and um, I want to emphasize to this committee and our shared institution that we as the staff know um, the responsibility that the Office of Congressional Ethics has to not only the House as a whole, but to each individual one of you. Um, the gravity and seriousness of the work that we do is never lost on us, not for a day, not for a moment. When we go to work each day, we understand that we are working for the House uh, as a primary institution of our republic. And it is only by faithfully performing our duties that we meet our responsibilities to it. Now, obviously, um, I am also the subject of you know, this hearing, so allow me to put a few things in context. One, um, I apologize for any confusion. Um, it was not our intention to uh, not provide written testimony. Uh, Initially, on the Friday due date, it was our collective understanding that the testimony being provided was a statement of the OCE um, and that any written testimony was voluntary. Um, and uh, there was a decision uh, by my superiors that I would be here uh, to answer questions uh, that you may have. Um, so, uh, purely unintentional, and I apologize. Um, with regard to the allegations against me, you know, you mentioned the harassment, uh, sir. Um, that was a matter that was investigated five different times. Um, each investigation found that I was the victim of an unprovoked assault. I didn't harass anybody or act in any other way that was inappropriate. And every claim um, that suggests that was determined to be false. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I understand the, you know, the, the perspective that you have, sir. Um, what I would say is the head of the OCE is also a human being. In my case, it turns out I'm an alcoholic. Um, I recently completed six months of um, intensive outpatient therapy. Um, this is sometimes called recovery. Um, it is, uh, used to be called rehabilitation, rehab. Um, I continue in that program um, in a lesser intensive fashion. Um, I have a sponsor. Um, and every day, even here on this piece of paper right here, I have uh, the serenity prayer. It's a big deal for people who are addicts. Um, you know, every day I look at it, and every day I have to think about what happened and say that the people who know me best, the people who know my work best, who observe me on a daily basis, sometimes for as long as 10 plus years, um, they still have confidence in me uh, to do this job, uh, to be a father, um, and uh, to do what is necessary to help the House of Representatives um, in whatever way that I can. Uh, you know, uh, real quick, I think it is key to point out a few uh, misconceptions. One is, um, you made reference to a leak in 2015. Um, it was not a leak. Um, it was a release of a report involving um, improper trip to Baku, Azerbaijan, um, where the nation of Azerbaijan was laundering funds um, through American-based nonprofits to influence illegally members of Congress and their staff. Um, the OCE was responsible for uncovering that effort, um, which ultimately led to an FBI investigation and DOJ prosecution. Um, and so when the report was not released, it was considered to be of vital importance by the board to release it. And so the board chose, by a, an unanimous vote at the time, to release the report publicly on our website. Not to, uh, not to the press. Um, real quick, and I know we can get into this a little bit deeper, but you know, ethics, the ethics Committee, they do use our materials pretty regularly. We have a robust relationship with them where we provide evidence in our cases. Um, so it's a misconception uh, that they do not. Um, Ma'am, we do have a code of conduct. I'm sorry you couldn't find it. Um, I did look at the website the other day, and I did see it, and I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Um, as far as transparency with regard to what we open, that is done because of a belief that the confidentiality of the people who are being accused of, of whatever misconduct deserves to be respected. And so we don't publicize all of the information that comes in um, our way. Um, and lastly, um, you know, I think uh, that you know, it is conventional wisdom that the Senate would benefit from an independent ethics institution. Um, but with that, 
I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.